One of my favorite pl- Mizunas that we grow on the farm is called a Miz America, and it is just the coolest little plant. Um, come, I'll show you. Show you what the micro trays look like because they're so beautiful and so full. Just little chia pets. They are, but they look like chia pets. They're so freaking cool. And but beautiful color. Uh, the color itself is amazing, but the flavor is even cooler. So this is- So these, this is like a mustard. This is a type of mustard. It's a type of Mizuna. So it's like a little bit of a hybrid. It grows very evenly for us. It's always a staple in our salad mix. Most of our salad mixes will include something like this. One, because the color of it is absolutely gorgeous. The flavor of it is really unique. In my opinion, it has a little bit of like a starchy flavor to it, and it tastes like McDonald's french fries. Mmm. <laughs> it really does, though. <laughs> Have a taste. Tell me what you think. It's a little spicy, but, or like spicy McDonald's french fries. Oh, you're right. Right? <laughs> Almost the first bite of it is starchy. Yeah. But then it quickly goes to spice. Yeah. Huh. Fascinating. And the aftertaste is a little, yeah. has that umami, I would say. Yeah, but a little wasabi-ish. Well, a little wasabi yeah. too. Um, another great plant that will grow incredibly in a hydroponic system are, are peas, sugar snap peas. So. These are all peas over here. These are slightly, I would say, maybe overgrown for our system, as you can kind of tell. But when they're small and short. But these are, you're, you're harvesting the shoots, not the peas, right? Yes, the shoots, sugar snap pea shoots. They have these adorable curly tendrils that'll wrap up around anything really, even itself. Um, and it'll continue climbing and climbing. But the these are so lovely. They're like really sweet. They go great in salads. And uh, most people don't know that they can grow peas hydroponically, which is kind of cool. We use this pressing technique where we actually are able to stack all these peas on top of one another and help them germinate. And they will eventually root into the rock wool, which hmm. is really fun. Up in the stacks. <laughs> One of the coolest plants that we grow here is also known as purple oxalis. And these are quite common as, you know, your ornamental house plant. You can find them in a lot of stores, but most people don't actually know that these are edible and taste incredible. They have, like the name, oxalic acid in them. And so they're, in my opinion, taste like the skin of a plum or a Granny Smith apple. Mm. So it has that little bit of tartness, sourness, candy profile to it. Um, and I really love them over here. They also, they look like butterfly wings, yeah. which is like the most beautiful aesthetic leaf you can get. I have a feeling that you had all those like little candies that you loved as a child, yeah. but now you're an adult and you're like, I could get it in my green. Oh and, yeah, and oh red. yeah. <laughs> I, every salad that we make here is always topped with a special treat, like <laughs> oxalis or, you know, some other beautiful flower that gives you that, you know, just memory of maybe stashing and eating some sour candy in your room. It's fun. <laughs> you gotta have fun with your greens. All right, so there's tons of different kinds of mints out there. Hundreds, thousands. One of my favorite ones that we grow here at the farm is called Candy Pop Mint. And- Candy Pop? Candy Pop. Candy Pop. Um, and looks like these little, little pops. Yeah, they're like little puffs. Yeah. Right over here. And the flowers themselves, in my opinion, taste just like sweet cotton candy. So it's a little sweet, lovely 
very floral. So and you're really very harvesting fragrant. these for the flowers and not necessarily the leaf, or both. Um, we're using it for both, really. Oh. We have some some customers really like the petite tops, so mm. we'll harvest just this little guy. Mm -hmm. It has a bit of like a savory taste to it rather than your like sweet mints, which I really enjoy. It goes really well on like more like fattier dishes, but the flowers themselves are really great as garnishes as well. Cause they have these little long stems, poofs that come out. Let's show you another mint. So one other mint that we grow here at the farm is apple mint. Apple mint looks quite different than- It's like, it's furry, isn't it's it? It's fuzzy. Yeah. It's a fuzzy one. It's really fragrant has these gorgeous trichomes. Now you don't usually think about eating a fuzzy plant. I know. How do you how do you use apple mint? So this is great in infusions. If you wanna infuse or make teas, you can also dry this leaf as well. But this is a great thing to add into infusions or muddling or smashing, you know, when you are making some fun drinks or anything like that. It goes great in lemonade. Opinion. Anything with citrus and mint, oh, it's the best. So one of the easiest plants, or I would say the fastest growing plant that we grow on the farm is radish. Um, this over here is a type of red rambo radish. So it has this purple, beautiful, these are the cotyledons of the radish um, seed. And, and again, you're growing the radish for the greens and not necessarily Well, radish. you know, with radish, you're actually just growing it for the cotyledons. The cotyledons, so those are the first two leaves. The first two that leaves that seed. emerge. And yeah. they, most, most cotyledons actually all somewhat look the same. They have these like little heart-shaped mm -hmm. leaves over here. The radish ones are definitely one of the largest ones that you'll see around. When you grow radish, the true leaves that emerge are also quite fuzzy, but they're not very yummy in my opinion. Yeah, um, okay, so you gotta get these. You gotta get you these them, right. Yeah, and these are ready for harvest. These will be harvested tomorrow. Yeah, okay. And they are seven days old. So you're, yeah. you're harvesting at like seven to eight days, essentially. Exactly, for Got radish. It. Which is good. What I'm, I'm sorry, I, I know you're gonna pick your top 10, but what's this one with the red leaf? This is amaranth. Oh, it's um, amaranth, It's okay. a type of Callaloo amaranth, and it is just the prettiest leaf And you're ever. eating, again, the greens and not necessarily the seeds that you would exactly. normally have. Exactly. Okay. This has a little bit of a more gentle, it does have that same earthy flavor that amaranth does, that red amaranth. Little bit of a milder flavor, in my opinion. And you can still see the like the signature red mm -hmm. from the amaranth come through over here. But yeah, this is a type of Callaloo amaranth. And it's so pretty once it grows large. The leaves themselves get so big. Look at this one. Oh, wow, yeah. So pretty. big. Yeah, they're beautiful. I love these in like flower arrangements um, or anything like that, just to bring out some of the colors of the flowers that you might have. Mm. Salad burnet, this is a fun one. So salad burnet. Sanguisorba. Sorba? Sanguisorba, right, the genus. Oh, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> so this guy is, has one of the most interesting flavors to it. It's um, in my, once you cut it, it smells just like a watermelon rind, right? You wanna try? Oh yeah. Oh, it smells like a Jolly Rancher watermelon candy. It really does. Yeah, and it tastes like it too. Wow. Um, but mild. It's not like overly no, sweet or anything. No, it's not sweet or anything like yeah, yeah. It also produces these beautiful. It almost flowers. looks like little poison ivy leaves. <laughs> like it does. micro poison Micros. ivy leaves. Yeah. Definitely not the same effect. No. Definitely Way not. better. Um, Delicious. So lovely, right? I grow this in my garden as an ornamental plant, but I never have thought about picking it 
off and eating it, even though it's called Salad Burnett. Yeah. Like, I was just like, oh, it has pretty funky little pink flowers. You the know? little yeah. pink ones that yeah, shoot that, off. Yeah, exactly. They look like little aliens. I love them. <clears throat> like um, cleaning brushes, kind of like. Exactly. This is your big amaranth over here. So we, <sighs> occasionally we have some seeds that end up in other trays. Mm -hmm. So this was a. Uh, that one jumped the ship. He jumped the ship. This was living in some sorrel. This is green sorrel over here. Another fun, fun flavor. I'm a sucker for anything that has like a lemon citrusy kick to it. I think it just tastes so freaking good. Green sorrel has a bit of a more of a succulent leaf to it as well. The texture of it is quite nice. You could blanch these, you can cook them down. They'll be really good in salad as well if you chop them up. So this is another really fun leaf that we have growing here at the farm. We have a lot of different kinds of dianthus growing on the mm, farm. Look at it, it's so pretty. This is one of my favorite varieties. It's called spooky or scary. It has these little beautiful flower petals that are just oh, breathtaking. Beautiful horticultural value. So is this something that is edible? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's edible. We grow four different varieties of dianthus. And it's kind of, I love looking at them side by side next to each other because they're all so, so different, but also so unique, uh, so similar in the same ways. So these two are part of the same freaking family. Isn't that mm -hmm. incredible? This, along with all three of these, they all pull apart the same way. So you have these like long, beautiful leaves over here. They do so well as a garnish. Very pretty. So pretty, right? They also smell incredible. Like, mm. bundle of roses. Yeah, so great pollinator cute. plant as well. So good. An early pollinator plant. We have some pollinators in this space, but <laughs> mostly like little flies. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the fav my favorite plants that we grow on the farm is cilantro, but we grow a variety called dwarf lemon cilantro. And mostly for the cilantro berries and the flowers. Oh, so wow. the, it's really fine leaved as well. Yes. So these leaves are a little bit. You can see it. When cilantro goes to flower, it act, it will start shooting off less leaves as well. So mm -hmm. and they're a little oh, bit. I smell it. You just picked it, and I just incredible, it's right? Very redolent right now. So this is one of the flowers over here. It smells incredible. Yeah, it tastes great. really good. But the berries themselves are personally some of my favorites. They're like... Now, do they taste like cilantro or...? Yeah. They do. Okay. And they're juicy. They go really well on like a fish. Huh. Like like, almost like a cilantro caper. I was just about to say the same yeah? thing. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. These are so fun. Something that I think that we do pretty special on the farm is that we collect seeds from a lot of our plants. So we're able to reseed and collect seeds from, let's say this cilantro, uh, this lemon cilantro is a pretty rare thing to find your seed suppliers typically, but we're able to collect the seeds, dry them out, and then replant them as well. Wow, so. that is Strong. incredible. It's good, right? It's a really wonderful taste. And you know what's funny because you know how some people taste a soapiness to, sa to the cilantro. Yeah. I just got a little hint of soapiness. It doesn't bother me, but mm -hmm. I could see how, you know, it's it's in that seed. Yeah. And I could taste what some people must taste. Yeah. But it's excellent, because you get hints of like citrus. It's very complex. I've always wanted to pickle them mm. and see how that does. I think having like the pickled berries on any dish can really add some fun, fun flavors to mm. it. And it'll probably make the brine smell amazing and taste incredible oh, yeah. as well. You just mentioned soap. One of the first plants that we grew at Farm One um, is called Popolo. Mm. Popolo is um, native to Mexico. It's this plant over here. Oh, very shrubby. Very shrubby. I'm gonna just pinch one stem of it off. This is... Oh wow, I smell that. 
Ooh, very, um, it's like cumin or something, I don't know. It's, in my opinion, smells like the soap of the cilantro. Oh, interesting, yeah. okay. It's uh, very interesting, it's very strong. This is a very, very powerful flavor and scent as well, but it does really well. It's traditionally used in samitas, which are these like fattier, more like pork heavy sandwiches. And this leaf actually is able to like cut the fat of that of the pork. Mm. And it does taste really freaking good on a sandwich. Yeah, I wonder if like a like Korean, you know, like pork belly and stuff Ooh, like that. If yeah. That Anything you know, like, like that has yeah. that super fatty mm -hmm. flavor to it. I can imagine this being really nice with jackfruit too. Oh, like interesting. If you're going for a vegetarian option. Initially, one of our inspirations for starting this farm is that we came across this plant in a farmer's market and um, we're not able to find it later on in life. Mm. So when Rob went back and asked for more popolo the next week in, at this farmer's market in California. They were like, sorry, we don't have any more popolo seasons over. So got thinking, how do we do this all year round? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's a ton of people that have never even tried popolo or even know what popolo is. And how can we introduce these plants to other people um, in the world, especially in New York City? You can grow popolo indoors. It grows pretty big. It needs a, quite a bit of pruning and whatnot. It's a really, really special plant to have. Some people come by and they taste this plant and they're like, I haven't had a flavor like this since I was like six in my home country or something like that. So it's really cool to be able to grow this amount of diverse crops in the space and introduce them to people. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your selections and your choices. Of course. Um, and definitely introducing us to some new plants that maybe we only ever used in our gardens horticulturally, and now we know that we could actually eat them as well. So many fun plants that you can eat. We'll have some more interesting plant tours and tips around the bend, so be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications button if you dig this channel. And take a look at our website, homesteadbrooklyn.com, for our online courses from Houseplant Basics to the Houseplant Masterclass. And don't forget we run a sister channel called Flock Finger Lakes, which highlights topics like regenerative farming, gardening for wildlife, and the lost arts. So check that channel out if that interests you. We'll see you in the next episode.